So let's see if there is any question regarding this. <coughs> There will be a lot of space this side, you can come. Last question. Uh, second one, relationship with human beings. Is it a relationship with human beings or with beings or with them? Relationship with human beings. This is relationship with rest of nature. Rest of the nature. So which includes the beings. Then, yeah. We include everything in nature. Human being and rest of nature. How to sustain our relationship with others? Because we no one wants to be in opposition. So I have very big doubt how to sustain our relationship. Yeah, we are going to discuss that. All this we are going to discuss one by one. <laughs> what we said in the last class that this is the need for us to take care of all three. So then we will try to take care of all three. That is the kind of content of this workshop. Coming in this. But relationship, that side we put relationship, no? This side we put physical facility. A physical facility is in relationship to the rest of the nature. Are you still saying that the relationship? Yeah, in fact, when you understand, when we understand this properly, it turns out that what we call as physical facility is a natural outcome of fulfillment of our relationship with the rest of nature. For example, our relationship with plants. If we plant the tree, right, we are fulfilling our relationship with the plant. But in return to that, we are getting fruits and flowers and leaves and all such things. Right? So, this physical facility that we get is a natural outcome of fulfillment of our relationship with the rest of nature. And this fulfillment of our relationship with the rest of nature is what is called work. Fulfillment with the, of our relationship with human being is what is called behavior. So this is behavior part, this is the work part. So then you can see in a proper perspective, if you look at the physical facility, it is not exploitation of nature. This physical facility is an outcome of Fulfillment of my relationship with the rest of nature. So that will be the matter of a relationship, not exploitation. A relationship of mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature. So I fulfill the tree by way of planting it and nurturing it. And the tree fulfills us by way of giving fruits and flowers and leaves and all these things, you know, the wood. So there is a relationship of mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature. And physical facility is an outcome of it, a natural outcome of it. That is another interesting point, you know, as we go, as we go along, we will be able to see that we have come to, you know, believe that this nature or the rest of nature other than human being is a means to us. And we can do away, do with it, do anything with it as we want. We call it exploitation of nature or mastery over the nature. So it is not a question of mastery over the nature. 
It is a question of understanding the relationship with the rest of nature and fulfilling that relationship. Ensuring mutual fulfillment, mutual enrichment. talk about this, this has largely to do with the feelings. Yeah. The fulfillment of relationship with human being has largely to do with the feelings, not with physical things. Like feeling of trust, feeling of respect, feeling of affection, love. So, there is, you know, the role of physical transaction is very minimal. When it comes to the rest of the nature, this is physical in nature. They are of two different types. Therefore, they are categorized in two different. Yeah. Yeah. But when you go to express this feeling, it has to be essentially in terms of doing something for the nature, right? Something like planting the tree or protecting the tree, you know, watering the tree, right? So, yeah, and physical action. Where is, when I have the feeling of respect for you, I just express in terms, forms of some gesture. So what is important in that is not the gesture but the feeling. The fundamental transaction which is taking place in the relationship with human being is that of the feeling. For example, sitting here together for eight days, right? We are not going to make any transaction of physical things. But we are doing a lot of transaction. Transaction of the understanding, transaction of the feeling, right? And it is significant. And you can see, this kind of workshop can be conducted only for human beings, not for animals. <laughs> because the transaction which will take place in all these eight days is in terms of the understanding, in terms of the feeling. The physical transaction is very minimal. So that is why this is kept in a separate category as compared to this. But then both of them have to be ensured. This has to be ensured, this also has to be ensured. But here, the physical transaction is very minimal right? and of very symbolic time. Here, the physical transaction is necessary, essential. <coughs> when you look at yourself, yes, you will have feeling for the human being, feeling for the nature, rest of nature. But when you go to express it, in case of human being, it is feeling which is of importance, the expression of it is very symbolic. In case of nature, rest of nature, <coughs> expression has to be in the form of some physical activity. So I will plant the tree or nurture the tree or take the flowers, the fruits, you know, from the tree. All these are physical activities. We can differentiate this, you know, that this workshop is one example. There is, you know, there is no physical transaction taking place. Yet, it is a very important transaction. For human being, it is a very important transaction. You know, sitting in this workshop and trying to understand about human being, about nature and so on. While no transaction is taking place physically. <coughs> I am not giving any physical things to you or I am not taking any physical things from you. Right? The transaction is purely in the form of understanding, in the form of feeling.
what's the difference with the uh, physical uh, <coughs> when you are uh, having a feeling? I mean, that is mm -hmm. our feeling as human beings as an object on the physical, uh, physical, it could be animals, whatever else. Mm -hmm. But they cannot express the same feeling back to us. Uh, and that is the difference between the humans. Humans transact it so that the humans can express the feeling, but the plant, uh, the only thing plants on our, on our actions, then we, we get the reward of the statement when the plant are free and then we enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, and it is both ways. Since even when you see it from the perspective of the human being, I have to make the transaction in terms of physical facility when it is coming with the rest of nature. And on the other note, you are saying is that when it is written back, right, it is in the form of some physical you know, thing and not just in the form of feeling. Whereas with human being, it is you know, mainly in the form of feeling, both ways. From my side to the other human being and the other human being expressing it back to me. In some part, even the animals, they respond with affection from the human. Yeah. So like the cats and the dogs, you can keep them with affection, real respect. You know, even in your sound of your footsteps, then we get excited. That's all. Yeah, the animal has the possibility of becoming sensitive to the issue of feeling, particularly when they come in contact with the human being. That possibility is there. And we see when we talk about the animal, you know, and the human being in detail, we see that there are some, uh, you know, possibility of the animal, you know, which also have got the self to become sensitive to you know, the issue of feeling. The possibility is there in animals also. Yeah. Any other question? It's not actually the question, but uh, it's an incident I would like to share here. Like over the lunch, I was thinking about the first session. And in the first session, uh, we talk happiness, continuity of the happiness, more relationship, and the more physical facility. That's a very interesting incidence of my own life. Five years, years ago, I was in my hometown to celebrate Diwali. So I grabbed this opportunity, I was in the market, I called up my wife, and I told her that I'm bringing a new sari for you as a Diwali gift. I could easily understand how happy and how excited and how eager she was to her wife over the telephone. I bought the sari, I went home. Uh, she tied the packet. In that moment she was very happy and I was equally happy, you know, because happiness of giving something. But the moment she opened the packet, she saw the sari. The sari was beautiful, but the color was not of her choice. <laughs> Immediately her happiness, I mean she became very upset and my happiness disappeared, I don't know where. <laughs> so that I found the difference between the happiness and the continuity in the happiness and uh, the more relationship and the more physical happiness. we had asked at the end of the session. First was that we find out whether we are living in this smaller circle, that is this animal consciousness, or in this larger circle, that is this human consciousness. Then whether this transaction, transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is essential or not. Number three, if this is Essential. This is what we call as progress and development. In that sense, are we really progressing or we are going round and round in this circle? And number four, the role of education is to enable this transformation 
from animal consciousness to human consciousness. So the major role is that of education. And you can see it is the most important role to be played you know, when it comes to human beings. So in that sense, education is the most important activity for human beings. And teachers are the most responsible you know, people who are supposed to ensure this education. Sanskar, which can enable this transformation. So these were the four points we had made before closing the session. What I am saying is that animals living like animals is very fine. <laughs> <laughs> and human being living like human being is also very fine. <laughs> but the human being living like animals is what is creating the problem. <laughs> so, when I am saying animal consciousness, it is not containing the animals. The animals living with animal consciousness, they are in order, they are in harmony. <coughs> but the human being living with animal consciousness is what is creating problems. So what I mean here is that the human being living with this smaller circle is living with animal consciousness because the major identification of the animal is that it considers itself to be the body. And therefore, its major concern is to keep nurturing the body, keep the body in good health. Right? If we as human beings also limit ourselves to just the body, okay, this does not suffice for us. We need to understand the self and we need to understand the body. We need to understand the need of the self and need of the body and fulfill the need of the self and need of the body. And it is in relation to this need of the self that this right understanding and right feeling becomes essential for us. So if we are undermining this and only trying to fulfill our need with this, it does not work. It works well with the animals. So what I am saying that human being living like animals with the assumption that I am the body. From there moving to human consciousness that is trying to understand the human being as the self and the body and the coexistence of the two. Right? Trying to identify the need of the two and fulfill the need of both self and the body. That is human consciousness. are in a better state than the human being living with animal consciousness. That's the crisis. In fact, a lion, for example, how many days can it kill in its lifetime? But a person like Hitler can kill 60 lakh people right? in one lifetime. Not even a lifetime, no, in 20 years. He could kill 60 lakh people and in a very torturous manner. Very difficult to think what 
had, you know, he did, you know, with the Jews. And if you see some of the movies which shows about what uh, was done in the in the uh, Nazi camp, you know, the Hitler's camp. So this only human being living with animal consciousness can do. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to explain. That what has happened is that if you look at the animal, the body and the bodily needs are of paramount importance. When it comes to human being, now somehow your need of the self has also started showing up. But you are not able to identify the need of self properly and you are not clear what you have to do to ensure the fulfillment of the need of the self. And that is creating problem. But take, you know, to take an example. If you try to look at the amount of clothes or the number of clothes that you would require to protect your body from heat and cold and things like that, yes? what do you think? The amount of clothes or the number of clothes required will be limited number, unlimited number. <laughs> limited, right? Four pairs or eight pairs or twelve pairs, right? Now, if you try to get respect from the clothes, okay? if you are buying clothes to get respect from others, okay? <coughs> now, will it remain unlimited or limited? Need of the clothes. It becomes unlimited. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that you have started satisfying the need of the self. This respect is the need of the self or need of the body? Self. self. So you are trying to satisfy the need of the self with the help of the physical facility. That you cannot do. That is where you get stuck. All this, you know, accumulation of unlimited amount of physical facility is you know, arising out of this need of the satisfaction of the self. All these people who have already accumulated a lot of money, they are still accumulating more. Does it have to do with the uh, respect issue, the name, the fame issue? Or does it have to do with the issue of their physical facility to take care of their body? What is it? So, now that need of the self has become significant for you and you do not know how to satisfy the need of the self and you are trying to satisfy it with physical facility. If you try doing that, need of the physical facility will appear to be unlimited. And that is what is happening. Like in India, we have people like Ambani. Three lakh crore rupees they have. Their asset is evaluated to three lakh crore rupees. Do you think it is enough? I mean, to get, give you a feel, if you convert this into wheat, okay? <coughs> if you convert this into wheat, the amount of wheat that will be bought by it can be, you know, will be enough for all 100 crore people in India to eat for two years. If all the people of India, 100 crore people, eat for two years, right? 
they will not be able to exhaust this 3 crore rupees, 3 lakh crore rupees. And this is not enough for two people. <laughs> <laughs> they have been fighting with each other, two brothers, you know, for four years. A lot of news keeps coming. So if they were, you know, animals, then this was far more than enough for them. <laughs> but human beings, they are stuck with this issue of respect here. So they want to get respect from people. Right? So they want to become the richest man on the earth without knowing what or without knowing what to do with it, right? Like even if you become the richest man on the earth, what will happen? <laughs> So, we are distracted because of the need of the self. And we are distracted because we have not, not, not been able to decide what to do for the fulfillment of the need of the self. As we go on, we will see you know, what we have to do to ensure the fulfillment of the need of the self. What we have to do for the fulfillment of the need of the body. As a human being, we need to satisfy both the self and the body. <coughs> Saying that uh, when a person is still craving for more, with a wrong understanding about the needs of the self, the person is in a state of uh, animal consciousness. Yes, that's what I am saying. <laughs> <laughs> Whether having more or not having more, if he is not, does not have the clarity, <coughs> right, of what he needs, he does not have the clarity about relationship, and is only working for physical facility, thinking that everything else will be taken care of, then he is living with animal consciousness, whether rich or poor. <laughs> that we have to conclude. <laughs> so, as a human being, we need to take care of all of them. And the role of education is to enable this transformation from here to here. And it is in this sense that we have to evaluate our education system. Is that okay? <coughs> Yeah, so we are not clear as to what is our goal as a human being. Right? We are not clear what a human being is. That's first thing. Then we are not clear about what is the goal of human being or what is the need of human being. Therefore, we are not clear what we need to do to satisfy the need of human being. This three clarity is not there. Therefore, we are not able to make a society and you know, order which can ensure the fulfillment of the need of the human being. Right? Can we define the amount of physical facilities needed for any human being? Yeah. We will do that. We will do that. <laughs> yeah, we will do all this. <laughs> That's the beauty of this workshop. <laughs> so by the time we discuss the first step, there are questions about the second step, right? <laughs> then we go to the second step and then so on, you know, we can proceed. <coughs> so we'll certainly talk about relationships. We'll talk about the need of physical facility, whether we can decide this need, you know, of physical facility or not. Then we'll see whether availability is more than what is required or not, right? For example, that is another report which I didn't refer to because it's short period of time, but I can go back and refer to this. This is 
received the report, which has very recently come out from the United Nations. Right? It says more than 1 billion tons of food is lost or wasted every year right? 